Okay, so we are starting chapter 12 today, which you will notice builds up completely on the back of chapter 11. So it is very important that you understand the model that we looked in chapter 11, because what all we're going to do is add an extension to that model in this chapter. So there's really nothing new. So to start off with, in chapter 10 and 11, our long run analysis so far, the question that we ask is where does growth come from? And I think we saw that there are two places where growth effectively comes from. One is savings, but what, what we also saw from the model is that savings can only give us growth in the short run. That if our the economy usually have a steady state. And once we get to that steady state, there is uh, no more growth of output. And so if our savings were to increase suddenly, then of course investment would go up and uh, as a result, we will have more capital in the economy. And as a result, output will go up. But the thing is, this takes us to another steady state. So from steady state one to steady state two, there will be growth in the economy and output, output per worker will be increasing, of course. But this will only happen for a limited period of time. Once we reach the new steady state, the growth stops once again. And of course, we can't continue to keep increasing our savings rate uh, without, without an end, right? And we can't have 100% savings we can't probably even have 80% savings. That's way too much. So this has to stop. So the problem we're seeing with uh, thinking of savings as a way of inducing growth is that this can only happen for a limited period of time. And, you know, and, and then that's the end of it. The second thing we saw or we talked about in chapter 11 is uh, the, the second source of growth can be technology. But of course, we did not see anything with technology. We assumed that technology was fixed. Uh, another assumption that we also made was that population was fixed. So our assumption in chapter 10 and 11 was that population is fixed, which was in, remember, in our economy, uh, we had this function, uh, y equals to function of k and n where n was the number of workers or whatever, and this was fixed. This did not change. And we also assumed that technology was fixed in the economy. We did not introduce technology in the model. This equation does not have a technology component. Uh, I mean, that's, that's the same as assuming that technology is fixed. If something isn't really changing, we don't really show that in our model. But in chapter 12, we are going to relax these assumptions. So we are going to let population change and we are going to introduce technology into our model and let the, the state of technology or the level of technology change as well. And as we do that, we are going to be answering these two important questions. First is what is technology? And the second is when we say technological progress, what do we really mean by that? Okay, so I think I've already answered the first question before. Now let me write that down in any case. What is technology? So basically, technology is a means of production. Okay. So basically anything that allows us to produce something is our technology. Now this can be a primitive technology as a rock or a piece of stick, or it can be very high tech technology like nano chips and whatnot. So that is technology. Anything that allows us to produce something. And from here, then we can say, what is technological progress? I mean, it's not enough to say when we have better technology. Then once again, we ask, what do we mean by better? What exactly is that? So the way we are going to define technological progress is 
here. If we have technological progress, when we can produce more with same inputs, so we have certain level of inputs. So our inputs right here, our inputs are out, uh, capital and workers, and our input uh, output is uh, well output, whatever we're producing. Uh, if with the same level of input, the same level of capital and same level of workers, we can now produce more. We say that we have better technology. It can be because production, we are producing, uh, let's say, more with the same resources or we're producing faster. And there can be many different ways in which we can do this. And I think there are some examples given in the book, so you guys can check that out. And the second way in which we can say technological progress has taken place is if, I mean, it's just the opposite of what we have said, we can produce the same amount. So output is the same. We can produce the same amount with less input. So what we can do is we can reduce capital. We can reduce workers. So input has gone down. But we have found a way to keep our production constant. It's not changing. So these are the two ways in which we can uh, produce more. And uh, sorry, these are the two ways in which we can say that technological progress has taken place. Okay. All right, so now let's get to the model. The model that we are going to be using is very similar to what we had in the previous chapter. Output is a function of capital, workers, and technology. Okay, so A is our state of technology. Once again, it can be a hammer, it can be nano chips. They're all technology. Uh, so now to make things easy, instead of having three variables, uh, what we are going to do is we're going to simplify this and assume that Y is a function of capital and A in, okay? And once we do that, once we multiply technology with workers, uh, notice what we were doing previously. Uh, at this stage, in is all about quantity, the number that we have, number of workers. When number went up, output went up. And A was all about quality, what type of technology we have, is it good or is it bad? When we multiply A and N together, what we get, A N, uh, it becomes, uh, N is workers, so A N is effective worker. So basically what we are calculating with A N is the quality worker that we have. So if N stays same, but A goes up, so each worker now has a better technology to work with, then what we have is more effective workers. And once again, if A goes down and each worker has worse technology to work with, then the, we have a less effective worker. So now what we are saying is here is that output depends on capital and effective workers, not workers. When we talk about workers, we're assuming that, you know, they're fixed. I mean, there can be no improvement in how well a worker performs. 
but we can improve the performance of a worker but by giving him better technology. We take away a typewriter and give that person a laptop. And immediately we've improved the effectiveness of the worker. And how did we do that? We did that by increasing, improving the technology. So A has gone. And so that's what we mean by effective workers.